Length of tuple is a fun one. Uh, it involves these, these, these are Tesla cars, right? Model 3, Model X, Model Y. I'm not so hip as to know. Uh, Falcon 9, I think, are the, the spaceships. Anyway, what happens is for length of tuple, you pass in as the generic argument a tuple, which is in this case a, a kind of like an array of strings. It's a tuple of strings, but they look kind of like arrays. And then it gives you back a number which corresponds to the length of that tuple. So here we pass in four things and we get back four. Here we pass in five things and we get back five. Here we pass in a non-tuple thing, another non-tuple thing, and it is expected to error. So Ian, where would you start with something like this? I think one thing I'll say is that it's the as const that makes this a tuple and not just an array, right? Yes. Yep, exactly. Um, awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. So I would start off by saying if we if we we have some test cases down here that we want to error if it's not a, a tuple. Uh, so I would probably add an extends. I think I can do any, oops, not Andy. Andy. I gotcha. Oh. OK. Uh, and why is that? All right, thank you. Um, <laughs> so, so now we know it's going to be actually. It, then it's just going to be an array. So I might want right. a read only. Read only. Yep. And now we're now we're in and, tuple land. Uh, all right. So sweet. Now I can check. Ah, my that is more different. Ring. Actually, you did. So this means read only empty tuple. Ah. If you just have the brackets there. So what I encourage people to do always is start with unknown. And if you can it. make it work with unknown, that's better than using any. And then, right. you know, do something else when you have to. There's only a few situations like here and there that you have to use any in TypeScript. Usually mm -hmm. unknown is the better pick. And so I'm going to cheat here a little bit because I remember doing this in the meetup. <laughs> okay. Together. All right. All right. I probably wouldn't have figured it out otherwise, but uh, it's a bit know, of a in, in life JavaScript. Hack. Yeah, in JavaScript, we would use a, a dot length, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we can kind of do something similar here, if I remember. I'm in the wrong spot. It was. This. Yep. There you go. You got it. So, so you're just indexing into that type. notation doesn't work, but we can use the index notation. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, you got it. Um, it's basically the way that people solve this. Again, we are. I showed you can you can make all the pass the tests pass by using any here. It works. If you if you don't, by the way, they they will fail because um, it doesn't uh, it, it doesn't accept this value because it's it's not actually it has five elements, but the target only allows zero. You see that? Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's that. There's a couple other little ways that people have solved this one. I'll show. Here's one. Uh, we'll call it. Actually, let's just comment that one out up there so we can refer back to it. So here's another one that works. This is kind of funny. So extends is being ab kind of abused here. I don't know if I would like, I don't know if I'm a big fan of this, but this is a solution. Arrays and tuples and these things in JavaScript are always just objects. Functions are just objects. And you can call dot length, like you were saying, Ian. Well, that has some static value if we're talking about a tuple, and you can infer that value out. This is really pretty close to what you the solution you found, but I think this is uh, tricky for the sake of being tricky. I'm not sure I uh, I'm not sure I would let this fly in a code review unless there was no other way. Personally, um, what do you think about that? I don't know if you agree. Yeah, I, I think so. I, anytime I see infer, I get a little bit nervous. So if I can Same. avoid it, I'd like to. So this one is the same, but worse. <laughs> it's like needlessly checking if it extends number. Uh, OK, well, I don't know. Um, it seems like if we've already asserted that it's extending a read-only array, like we we have the guarantee that there's a length that's a number, right? Mm -hmm. So it seems like, yeah. like Yeah, like why go through the pain? Um, yeah. So that's one. There was a, I'm going to call it a nope, even though I, I think it works. It's a it's an LOL. Uh, there's this one, which, you know, is clearly somebody just uh, having fun with it. But you can kind of go through all the other options for the values up to a certain, uh, up to like some limit and recursively kind of rip through the, elements of the array and build up an accumulator to check the value starting from zero, increasing that counter. Um, don't do this, but I don't think this person meant this seriously. They're just playing around. And uh, yeah, there was another one that I saw a couple people, interestingly about the challenges, people submit 
things that are that are incorrect as well because if they get stuck they they just don't know how to solve it and this is one of the ways that somebody tried to solve it this doesn't work because of well we were talking about this in the last video with pick it doesn't constrain the generic so actually it is acceptable to pass in other things and probably since this one was written they added these tests here at the bottom which kind of help point people in the direction that um it's not supposed to work to pass in five or a string or something like that um because cool. otherwise you just get never back in this case like the way that right this, this one well yeah exactly which is not really the intended behavior it's the same right. with this one here this is using the infer trick this was another thing i saw they did t extends any so it's like oh it's so close but it's not quite there uh this is just a trick you have to sort of know that you can index with a literal string value so fun one <laughs>